Hi, welcome to worship at Christ Lutheran Church, where we live in Christ and share his love with all people. Today's worship service is brought to us by the staff and members of the Northwest Washington Synod, including some of our own church members. During this Easter season, we will be including a diversity, equity, and inclusion corner in our Sunday worship services and DEI conversations each Wednesday evening. And with that, today's DEI Corner. Hi everyone, and welcome to the first Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Corner, or DEI Corner. My name is Ashley Lynn, and I will be taking this journey with you through the next several weeks as we explore and embrace different communities. The DEI Task Force is building bridges within our church and our greater community by reaching in and reaching out, especially to underserved individuals and groups. I think we started out really educating ourselves. And as we went through the education process, we kept thinking to ourselves, well, what can we do with this knowledge? And it was enough of us that were engaged that we thought it would be a, a healthy thing for the church and for the community if we found a way to reach out with some of the new knowledge we had, and especially to reach out with minority groups or people who are uh, not in support. So much of what we have learned about the gospel truth of Jesus Christ centers on the one tenet that we love our neighbors as ourselves, and there should be no exceptions. I think Jesus was the first to promote diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I think this is a good time for our church to examine what we do and what we could do better in this light. In fact, I think that's how you clear a pathway to Christ. Diversity, equity, and inclusion is important to me because everyone has something to say, but not everyone has an equal voice or equal opportunity to say it. Growing up in the Detroit area, and also being the adopted mother of three children of another race. I thought I knew a lot about races in America. But when we started taking the class on Dialogues on Race, I realized how little I knew and how much of what I thought I knew was not actually accurate. So I believe it's really important that we get out there and spread the news to people to let them know that what we think we know may not be right. The issues around diversity, equity, and inclusion have always been of high value and passion for me. And so I am thankful for the opportunity to serve on this task force. For me, it's a matter of the heart and it goes deep to my core values. Anyone who wishes to join the group can from our congregation or someone who's interested in the church and wants to think about joining us because it's, it's, it's an outreach, and the whole point is to reach out to the community, including the congregation. It's important for me to take an active part in the task force because I am an ally, which means I am called to make sure marginalized communities have a platform to express their concerns and voice their opinions. This week, I am excited to introduce the various groups we will be discussing throughout our time together, both on Sundays, DEI Corners, and through deeper conversations on Wednesday evenings. This coming Wednesday, we want to hear from you. What are your suggestions, questions, or concerns? We will talk more about what, is truly, what it truly means to be a church in which we live in Christ and share his love with all people. Next week, we will discuss land acknowledgments and the holy listening sessions we had with the Lummi Nation during Lent. Another week, we will talk about the concerns from Black and Indigenous people of color with a highlight on the Asian and American Pacific Islander community. The next week, we are going to hear a story on immigration. The following two weeks, we will learn about some of the different struggles from the homosexual and transgender communities. 
And lastly, we will discover what it means to be a reconciling in Christ church. We are excited to go on this adventure together to better equip our congregation to embody diversity, equity, and inclusion to better support and uplift marginalized communities. And we look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. Hello, beloveds of Northwest Washington Synod. Happy second Sunday of Easter. This is Bishop Shelley Brian Wheat. Hello, everyone. My name is David Hahn, and I serve the Synod as the Director of Formation and Learning, and also the new LIVE program, which is a Living, living into Vocational Engagement, a lay collaborative uh, community. Hello, my name is Tracy Hall, Synod Administrator. Hello, my name is Herb Shaw, and I'm a fellow here at the Senate office. Hey friends, this is Susan Berg. I help with communications and event planning. Hi, my name is Diane Johnson, and I am serving as the director for Evangelical Mission. And greetings, my name is Andy Yee. I'm serving as assistant to the bishop, and welcome to worship. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains from our, to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journeys as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts shower us with love to you be given all praise with the holy spirit in the glory of god now and forever amen
Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. to the Lord of 
A reading from Acts 4. The whole congregation of believers was united as one, one heart, one mind. They didn't even claim ownership of their own possessions. No one said, that's mine, you can't have it. They shared everything. The apostles gave powerful witnesses to the reassurement of the Master Jesus, and grace was on all of them. And so it turned out that not a person among them was needy. Those who owned fields or house sold them and brought to price to sale to the sale of to the apostles and made an offering of it. The apostles then distributed it in a occurring to each person's need. Psalms 133, see how good, how pleasant it is for God's people to live together as one. See how good, how pleasant it is for God's 
people to live together as one. See how good, how pleasant it is for God's people to live together as one. For God's people to live together as one. See how good, how pleasant it is for God's people to live together as one. It is like precious oil on Aaron's head, running down on his beard, running down to the collars of his robe. It is like precious oil on Aaron's head, running down on his beard, running down to the collar of his robes. It is like precious oil on Aaron's head, running down on his beard, and running down to the collar of his robe. It is like precious oil on Aaron's head, running down on his beard, running down to the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Mount Hermon, falling on the hills of Zion, for that is where God bestows the blessing, life that never ends. For that is where God bestows the blessings, life that never ends. The blessing, life that never ends. The blessings, life, life that never ends. The blessing, life that never ends. It is like the dew of Mount Hermon falling on the hills of Zion, for that is where God bestows the blessing, life that never ends. Way deep behind me, Satan. You. 
A reading from 1 John chapter 1, verse 1 through chapter 2, verse 2. We declare to you, both from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you may also have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from Him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in Him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with Him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not know what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sin, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Christ who walks on wounded feet From garden tomb through darkened city street Unlocks the door of grief, despair and fear And speaks a word of peace to all who hear The risen Christ who stands with wounded side 
breathes out his spirit on them to abide. Whose faith still wavers, who dare not believe. New grace, new strength, new purpose, they receive. New hope among us, alive inside, gives us the strength to carry on. And let this love abide. The risen Christ who breaks with wounded hand, the bread for those who fail to understand, reveals himself despite their lingering tears and flames their hearts then quickly disappear. among us alive inside gives us the strength to carry on and let this love abide and serve and stand with those oppressed in this and every land till all are blessed and can a blessing be restored in Christ to true humanity new hope among us alive inside gives us the strength to carry on and let this love abide. New hope among us, alive inside, gives us the strength to carry on. And let this love abide. The Holy Gospel according to St. John in the 20th chapter. Listen to the word of God. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after this, he showed them his hands and his side. And then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. And so the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. And although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, boys and girls. 
How are you all on this beautiful Sunday morning? I have a friend here with me today. Can you introduce yourself? Sure. Hello, I'm Tommy the Turtle. Tommy the Turtle? Nice to have you with us. Do you want to help me tell the story today? Sure, but I might be a bit slow. After all, I am a turtle. That's okay. We all know that a turtle can be slow. So that's okay. Let's tell this story. So, sometime after the resurrection of Jesus, his disciples were all gathered together in a house. And all the doors were locked. And maybe the windows were shuttered too. Well, why were the doors locked and windows were shuttered? Well, they were scared. The disciples were scared. Why? Well, you see, Jesus had been crucified, and they were his followers, and I guess maybe they thought the same thing would happen to them. Oh, so they were scared. That's pretty scary. Yes, it is. So, but anyway, they were all there together on this night, and... Maybe they were going to have dinner together. Anyway, all of a sudden, Jesus was in the room. What? Yes. How did he get there? Well, I'm not sure. I don't know. The doors were locked, but he was there. And he said, peace be with you. And then he said it again. He said, peace be with you. And the disciples were so happy to see him. And then you know what happened? What? Well, then he said, just as my father sent me, now I am going to send you. Huh? Why did he say that? Well... Because God, his father, had sent Jesus to earth to teach his people, all of us, how he wanted us to live and love each other. Ah. Oh. Yeah. But now Jesus was going home to his father. And so the, he was worried the disciples might be sad, but he gave them a job to do. He said now he was sending them, and they should continue his work teaching the people how to live. Oh. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? You know what he did next? What did he do? He breathed on them. Yuck. I hope he didn't eat any onions. No, I think he probably had had some... Eh, maybe some loaves and fishes. Anyway, he said to them, when he breathed on them, receive the Holy Spirit. What did he mean by that? Well, he thought he knew the disciples would be sad when he left because they loved him so much. And he had promised that he would leave someone with them, the Comforter. The Holy Spirit. Oh. Well, there was one disciple that wasn't there. Do you know who that was? Hmm. Was it Thomas? Yeah. And later, the next day or so, the disciples saw Thomas and they said, Guess what? We saw the Lord. Yeah, they did see the Lord. Yeah, but what, do you know what Thomas said? What did he say? He said, unless I see the holes in his hands and the gash in his side, I will not believe. What? But yeah. they were telling the truth. Yes, they were. Well, about a week later, 
About a week later, I think it was a week, they were all together again. And this time, Thomas was there, and Jesus came in. <gasps> again? Yes, again. And he went right up to Thomas, and he said, Put your finger in my hand. Put your hand on my side. And then Thomas said, My Lord and my God. And he believed. Yay, he believed. And Jesus was happy he believed. But Jesus said, Also, blessed are those who have never seen and still believe. Yeah. So, let me ask you, Tommy, have you ever seen Jesus in person? No. Have you? No. I've never seen Jesus in person. Ever. But, Tommy, do you still believe in Jesus? Yes, I do. So do I. I still believe in Jesus. And Jesus says, blessed are we who haven't seen and still believe. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for sending your son to earth to teach us how we should live. Thank you that after he died, he rose again. He was resurrected and now he is with you in heaven and you have left us just like the disciples, with your Holy Spirit. Guide us every day. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen.
Peace be with you. This is what Jesus says as the disciples were locked behind closed doors in fear. But that's only the beginning. Peace be with you, Jesus would say a second time. And then, after Thomas would meet up with the group later, he once again said, Peace be with you. And one of the questions we might be asking is, why does Jesus say, Peace be with you, so many times? Well, we can offer many reasons why, maybe. Were the disciples hard of hearing? Working as a chaplain at Josephine and being a product of the 80s where I carried gigantic boom boxes on my shoulders, I know a thing or two about hearing loss. And now as a parent of two teenage boys, I still know about hearing loss, right? Take your dirty dishes downstairs and put them in the dishwasher, please. Please, take your dirty dishes downstairs to the dishwasher. Avery, take your dirty dishes downstairs to the dishwasher. Yes, I am told that this is something more specifically called selective hearing, but maybe something not too far off from the disciples' experience as they struggled with their concept of the Messiah versus Jesus' concept of the Messiah. Something here may have been so out of their worldview that Jesus may have needed to repeat it several times. If we look at repetition, though, positively instead of negatively, we might think of maybe something like mantras, right? which tries sometimes through repetition, uh, maybe allowing something to sink in deep, maybe moving something from the head to the heart. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Or from God's end, yes, you are my child. You are my child. Something that is maybe said over and over again until we get it or can, that we can claim it as our own. I am Iron Man. <laughs> Sorry, too many Marvel movies with my boys, but you know what I mean. But we might also ask, not only what it says about humans, but what does this say about God? Look, no matter where we are, no matter what our context is, no matter what makes us cower behind locked doors, be it fear, confusion, anger, feelings of guilt, whatever. God is never exhausted. So God is generous, right? God is never exhausted and never stops meeting us where we are with love and forgiveness. <laughs> yeah, Whew, right? Grace and peace to you, my siblings in Christ, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. There could be many legitimate reasons why Jesus says the same phrase so many times. And today, I might want to explore maybe one more reason why. The context changes. And when the context changes, the things that we say often land differently and can change everything. When Jesus says, peace be with you the first time, the disciples are ensconced in fear for their own lives, of being the next example for the empire, of being found by those who might be looking for them on the other side of that door. So hearing peace probably gave the disciples some comfort. It's going to be okay. You can get through this. And this is something good and maybe something exactly what they needed to hear. I'm at fault for not living in this space more often. One of the pastors uh, who I called once uh, when doing a check-in during our COVID time, called me back later and told me that he needed to hear that. It's going to be okay. You can get through this. And that I failed to say that. So I'm guilty as charged. And I'm really sorry about that. The point is that Jesus meets the disciples smack in the middle of their fear and confronts them. Peace be with you. However, I believe that Jesus doesn't stop there and gives them much more. You see, it's not just the words themselves, but I think Jesus tries to make it abundantly clear who it is that is offering these words of peace and that this changes everything. When Jesus says, peace be with you, the second and third time, it was right after he showed the disciples his hands and his side and just before he invited Thomas to even touch it. It's hard to imagine for many of us what Jesus is inviting us to do. To not only see the stab wounds in his side and where Jesus is, uh, the, these nails were driven horrifically right through his hands, 
But here, Thomas, stick your finger out and touch it. Put your hands in this big open wound that I have in my waist. Yep, you can't get more intimate than that. But do you see what is happening here? Jesus is changing the context of the disciples from the focus on fear to being confronted with your teacher, your rabbi, the one you promised to live and die with. And no wonder the disciples were rejoiced, right? But also the one who you betrayed, abandoned, denied knowing, and left at the hands of terrorists to be killed. In some ways, this is even worse than killing your enemy and something that I know would have sent me into some deep, deep guilt. It is this victim, and if you forget, go and touch the wounds. Both a victim of the system in place and a victim of your own betrayal who stands in front of you now. This is your dead man walking who has every right to come back to life to take revenge, just like all the movies we see, but instead offers this moment as a transformative moment by choosing to look at you, not as enemies, but maybe as those who he loves surrounding his deathbed. Peace be with you. Imagine if George Floyd came back to life with all the wounds that he sustained, both inside and out, and came back not only to offer who choked the life out of him, but also everyone who for years have not done the significant work to really change American culture enough to really see black lives as more than property and black siblings as more than drug addicts, murderers, and thieves. Imagine if George Floyd comes back to life and says, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And don't accuse me of heresy, of attempting to put uh, George Floyd on par with Jesus. If that's all we're getting from this, I think we would have missed a tremendous opportunity. What makes this forgiveness so powerful and radical is that it comes from the very mouth of the victim. So that is the parallel. We pray for the Holy Spirit in all of your goodness. Help us and our imagination to not miss how powerful and radical this voice is. For the disciples who have gone through this emotional roller coaster, who were invited to move from fear to rejoicing and to even uh, live in the deep guilt for a while, face to face with the one they victimized, uh, to do it now and not years later uh, uh, after therapy, to hear right now after that, peace be with you. Holy Spirit, breathe on us and do not let the power of your words be in vain. Unless we think that God's forgiveness is given solely on the basis of us feeling guilty we give thanks that even before Thomas was able to uh, be in that same place of guilt by being intimate with Jesus' wounds, we hear, peace be with you. Holy Spirit, may your radical forgiveness break open the doors that lock us in. Holy Spirit, may this forgiveness that you speak into our existence right now be the foundation of all that we do and all that we say. No, of all that we are. In your name, amen.
alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answered in steadfast love. Let us pray. Ya Allah, Engkau taburkan kasih karuniamu ke dalam dunia. Satukanlah gerejamu di dunia ini, agar dengan kuasa dan kasih di dalam kesatuan hati, kami menyaksikan kebangkitan Yesus Kristus. Hear us, O God. You proclaim the blessing of life forevermore. Like do upon the mountains, refresh your creation. Restore waters, cleanse the air, and provide revitalizing moisture to parched land. Give your whole creation the promise of new life. Hear us, O oh God. Great. Your mercy is great. You direct the nations, O oh God. Guide all in authority, that they shepherd their peoples in the ways of your love. Defeat us in our impulse to war, Bestow the peace of Christ upon those in authority and breathe upon them the Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God. Xavier Hoy, Manorea, Lagasana, Dag Gion Elbeno. Avakin Ledoch in the Nakafel, Lagasana, Dagnat and Avzalin. Xavier Amala Kachinoi, Lavichanyo China, Letabodu, Lemisak Ayu, Baligil Yuma Karaus, Lemelfuna, Lemisaru, Salaman, Our Dilacho. Xavier Hoi, Salotachin, Sama. Amen. Tu nos des la hermandad el uno con el otro en esta comunidad de fe de El Camino de Emmaus y en todas las congregaciones del Sínodo Noroeste de Washington. Alumbre la luz del Cristo resucitado en nuestra vida en común para que vivamos juntos en amor mutuo y para cumplir nuestro regocijo. Escúchanos, oh Dios. Tu misericordia es grande. Compartes el regalo de la vida eterna. En acción de gracias y recuerdo, Recordamos las vidas y los dones de aquellos que ahora viven en un gozo sin fin. Únenos con ellos en la esperanza de la resurrección. Escúchanos, oh Dios. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Yes. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil, for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
go out into the world in peace. Have good courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak and help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. God.